Hey, what's going on, everybody? Rusty Allen again with my partner, Levi Caesar, and co-host. We're here for segment number four of the Rusty Allen Virtual Fan Club, where we're talking about my career and all of the great artists that I was fortunate to play with. Uh, so we invite you to come in and check us out. Please hit that subscribe button so we can continue to do that. Big shout out to Beat Critton and Freeman and all my partners here in, in the Oakland Bay Area. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna hit that button. We need Hit your support. That button. We do it without y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. Right. Okay. So, um, I heard, uh, and I just checked it out. You guys did Soul Train. Now, I did Soul Train myself, but back in the day, we when I did it, we had to do it to a tape. But you guys did it live. Right. So, how did you feel when you were going to go on national TV with Sly Stone on Soul Train? Wow, man, that's like, look, everybody watched Soul Train Saturday morning, you know what I'm saying? I mean, me, you, everybody. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I mean, first of all, to even be in Sly and the Family Stone was like uh, the biggest thing that could have ever happened to me. But going on Soul Train, mm -hmm. I was like, man, this can't be happening. <laughs> but sure enough, it did, you know, and... uh it was it was just amazing um the whole experience about that the soul train experience that's what this is all about what well, well also how did your family and friends feel about it because usually you know it's a big response from family and friends yeah yeah well i mean everybody was happy for me you know me personally it was like anticipation it was excitement it was nervousness it was just like all of these different emotions running through my body it was like man <laughs> this right, uh, they corn flakes and milk ready to watch. Yeah, man, I mean, like, this is different. This is not like a live show, man, where, you know, you can get away with a few things. Mm -hmm. But Soul Train, man, the live thing, man, you got to bring your A game, you know. And, you know, I had to just, I had to prepare diligently for that show. Right, yeah, so let's talk about that. So what did you do to prepare for that prior to taping the show what, what did you, what did you um well one of the things i did was i went to the woodshed big time and made sure that the, what? the woodshed okay. you know and i shredded i shed it on sly's music you know constantly to make sure that uh i knew every little nuance about the songs that i could like possibly know and retain in my mind um and uh also you know uh got with Freddie and stuff, you know, we kind of like went over some things together and, you know, studied the music together, you know, he, he helped me a lot, man, and uh, that, yeah, that's, I just had to prepare, man, I had to bring my A-game, so, you know, I, got, I was in the shed big time, man. Good, man, good, good, okay. So now, that was you, so what, what did Sly do with you guys to prepare you for that show? Was, you know, a special rehearsal, new arrangements, I don't know. Yeah, well, um, basically we went to a rehearsal place on Santa Monica Boulevard in L.A. called Studio Instrument Rentals, and um, all the major acts will rehearse there. S.I.R.? S.I.R., yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. S.I.R., yeah, so we rehearsed for about a week, man. I stayed at that Holiday Inn right there on Highland Avenue off of Sunset. For one show? For the week? Yeah. <laughs> for the, and bring your lunch, because you're not leaving until, you know, we at least putting in six, seven hours. And uh, yeah, it was pretty intense, but uh, he knew that he had to have that band ready for that show. So uh, there was no problem with anyone staying. If we had to stay all night, it was all good, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, so you rehearsed a lot, and Sly rehearsed you guys a lot. You taped the show, it's all done. Um, so what, what were some of the things that you remember that had a, a big impact on you that you know you remember the rest of your life? Wow. Well, two things stick out right away. The first thing is that Sly was the first one to come in through the crowd and go to the stage. I don't know how him and Don worked that out. You know, Sly had influence with people, and he was the first one to do that. So, I mean, for us to come through the crowd 
I, I, you know, I envision that totally. I mean, like we just did it yesterday. It was just a big thing. And, you know, people were patting us on the back when we were walking through them and walked up to the stage and started jamming. Man, I'll never forget that. And uh, yeah, the next. Hard too, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was pretty amazing. And uh, uh, the next thing that really hit home to me is when I got introduced on stage by Sly's brother, Freddie. When he introduced me, man, it was like, I was like, man, here I am, you know, this little kid, man, from Sobrani Park in Oakland, California, he used to listen to Sly Stone on the radio and, you know, play his records and dance to his music and the whole nine, man, and I'm standing on stage at Soul Train with him, getting introduced to a national audience. I'll never forget that. And our uh, bass player is Rusty Allen. Yeah, it's cool. That's cool. Now, so, now, how did the boss feel? Because I, I know when we used to do stuff with Prince, how we looked at it and how he looked at it was two different things. Right. He'd find things that we never thought about. So, give me, uh, well, I don't know if you had talked to Sly after the show or the band, but how do you think he felt after the performance? What? How would he judge it? Well, I think that he judged it, you know, I think he felt really good about it because uh, during the rehearsal, there were a couple of moments where he got kind of like mad about some stuff. It was like, you know, I remember him saying, uh, if y'all can't get with this, y'all need to go home. So he wasn't having no, you know, mess. But then at the end of the show, he was upbeat, he was smiling, he was happy. And I think he felt that the reason he was feeling like that was because the band performed well. Energy was great, you know, uh, everybody's like, you know, persona was being you know, em you know, emulated and, you know, mm -hmm. and just put out there and everybody's personality was being caught on camera. It was just a great thing, man. And, and, uh, also, what, what do you think the, the crowd, how do, how do you think they felt about it? Because <laughs> it, it was a TV show, but it was live also. And it's y'all, it's a Sly Stone. So yeah. what do you think? Uh, man, very intimate. I mean, like I said, we came in through the crowd. So you know, they were patting us on the back. Rose and uh, Vet were up there already with Bill Lord. They started to groove. But the rest of us came through the crowd. And, man, they were dancing before we even, like, before I even got to the stage because uh, Lord was, like, laying it down so funky. And if you listen to Vet and Rose on them keys, man, they was coming straight out of the church, funk, gospel, grooving, man. So it was like the crowd loved it, man. It was beautiful. So, um, so everything was great. Now, but after it's all done, you done slept a couple of days, you done thought about it. Is there anything that you would have changed? Man, yeah. I mean, the only thing that I wish I could change or could have changed was the fact that I can't sing. Man. <laughs> you know, I wish I had a better singing voice singing Larry's parts because you got to remember, man, like Sly was a field general man out there and Larry Graham, man. You know, he was anchoring the defense, man. He was like the one that was like keeping everything grounded. And I had to like do what I could do to like, you know, try to maintain that that level of uh, intensity and whatever. I just didn't have the voice. So if I could have changed anything, I would have, you know, I wish that I could have had a better singing voice. But God didn't bless me with that, you know. But, you know, we don't get everything, so. Some people do, but I didn't get that. But that's the one thing that I wish I could change was a, would be a better singing voice. So when you when you came when you when you were inserted in the band, that was one of your duties too, to try to do Larry singing. Part. Yeah, I had to sing Larry's part. I mean, I'm gonna have some bottom. What? I had to do all of that, I man. Didn't know that. That's so. That's new for me, fam. Yeah. yeah, I had to do that, man. It's like. I remember a couple of times on some shows I had to sing Larry's part and it was a couple of times I didn't do so well and Sly would give me this look <laughs> you know I don't know if I'm gonna let you do that again <laughs> you know but it was it was cool I uh you know I kind of I guess I made up for it when I you know started playing my bass part that he yeah, soon yeah. forgot about that so oh, yeah. yeah but that's if I could change anything it would be my a better singing voice and it's hard to sing that you know sing 
and play bass. That's hard. I, you know, I did that, but I had to work on that, man. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, because you like, you know, playing a lot of syncopation, and then you got to syncopate your voice with with the rhythm of the, you know, the vocals and the whole thing. It's like almost having two brains. Some people are just blessed with that. You know, they can mm -hmm. do it effortlessly. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, we got a little bit of music from the album coming from the funk master himself. Yeah. I'm telling you, y'all ain't ready for it. You ain't ready. Ooh, boy. This is deep yeah. bacon grease. <laughs> yeah. My girl, Dee Dee Simon, boy, she the truth. And she going to tell you men and you women the truth about love. You'll see. Mm -hmm. It's coming out on the 28th. All right. So, um, okay, so... We basically talked about the, the whole experience. Now, having said all of that, how would you rate it overall, the, the whole, the, everything that you experienced? The preparation, the butterflies in your stomach before, the after effect, how would you rate all of that? The soul dreams. I'd rate, it, I'd rate it like a 10. I mean, you know, all of the emotions that I felt, man, the performance, you know, calming down once we started playing, you know, um, getting introduced, uh, the after parties, <laughs> the whole thing, uh, man. Yeah. We don't want to like, know about that, but oh, we're going to keep it PG. We're going to keep it PG. <laughs> <laughs> I rated a 10, man, easily. Yes, sir. Easy, easy, okay. Well, once again, this is Rusty Allen. I'm Levi. Episode 4. This was the Soul Train Experience. Don't forget to hit that button because we, we need your support. And the music is coming soon. I told you, y'all ain't going to be ready. Get, just get a bag. Like you say, you're going to throw up in the bag because it's going to be so funky. <laughs> All you, right. You ain't heard this funk in about 20 years. All right. Love you guys. We love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. All right. Thank you for watching Rusty Allen's Virtual Fan Club. Subscribe now and stay tuned for more. Peace.